Hey everybody, so with everything that's been going on, I wanted to talk about my favorite indie TTRPG, which is Stars Without Number. And um, I feel like I'm kind of uniquely equipped to talk about this game. I'm a little bit, you know, I'm kind of an evangelist for this game. Uh, I love it and I'm trying, always trying to get people to more people to play it. And um, at, my, uh, at my friendly local game store, we run a thing called One Shot Wednesdays, and then people come in, and typically we have like a couple of um, D&D games going, and then maybe sometimes people will run like Fate or um, uh, Call of Cthulhu or something like that. But, um, but I run Stars. I run Stars Without Number One Shots. So uh, what is the game? It's a post-apocalyptic sci-fi RPG, and it plays very much, to me, like an episode of Firefly, um, or maybe like The Expanse. Like, definitely way more on the uh, hard sci-fi end of the spectrum, whereas like if Star Wars has space magic and Jedi's deflecting lasers with swords that's going to be way over here and then it starts with that number is going to be like way over here um so how does it play um to me it plays very much like if you took D, &D right and then you mushed it together with the game traveler um that's how that's how it plays to me so, uh, for those of you who don't know, d and I think it came out in like 1977 or something like that. And then Traveler came out like right after, like right at the same time that Star Wars did. And a lot of people don't know about it, um, or they've never heard of it. But uh, Traveler is a, a 2D6 system. Everything is, is skill ba skills based. You don't really level up. You sort of just get better at it doing your skills and um, it's uh, it's very uh, role play heavy right there's if there if if we're talking about the um, the uh, three pillars of of, of uh, like uh, RPG elements where you could say that there's going to be like action like fighting and you know combat and stuff like that that that's like one pillar and then there's um, like role play and interaction and uh story stuff like that is another pillar and then exploration uh i guess that falls into story too it all falls into story but exploration and and you know uh navigating the world that that's another pillar um so a lot of people would say and i think i would agree that D, &D does combat really really well and then exploration way over there and role play is somewhere in the middle right and then traveler is the other way around it's like exploration role player over here and then combat it's kind of it's a little wonky um or at least that's how i feel about it right so this game i feel like it takes the best of all of those games and then sort of uh like wraps them you know puts wraps them up and puts a nice nice bow on it right um so yeah let's 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 kind of go through this a little bit um so if i if i pull up a character sheet um if you've played uh you know if you if you've played D, &D um and i'm assuming that most of you have <laughs> because it's like you know it's usually it's like the first uh rpg that most people play if they play an RPG. Um, this is a lot of this is probably going to look very familiar to you, right? Where you have your your three physical stats: uh, strength, dex, con, uh, intelligence, and then your your three mental stats: intelligence, wisdom, charisma, right? And there are other games where there's a lot more kind of like attributes, um, but you know this is just those are six six attributes it's good um so 
you know, your, your charisma is going to be your, your social skills, your wisdom, like maybe your streetwise, how, how good you are at noticing things. And you, know, you, you, you know, you know how it works, right? Um, but you might notice that there's a lot more, uh, skills. So that's one of the things, um, about stars that I actually really like is that the, um, I feel like a lot of the, uh, role play elements are really baked in there because like for example with my one shots that i run in my friendly local game store um oftentimes i will have a three-hour session where nobody throws a punch and um it's just all it's all role play and then people come away from it and they're like oh i love that game like that's super fun um, like, like literally. And, uh, and you know, if you said, if you said like, oh, like a D and D game where there's like no, no combat and just all role play, I think most, most people would say that sounds really boring. <laughs> so the, um, the, you know, the, the, the role play stuff is really baked into it. And, and, and that's one of the things that I like. As well as some um, exploration, because uh, exploration like uh, uh, stars is is really really built to be a a sandbox game. Um, so yeah, how it works um, is uh, um, you you're gonna you're gonna pick a uh, a background for your character, right? Um, there's a few baskets that the characters fall into. Um, so one of the um, uh, one of the one of the the main um, uh, mechanics of the game is that there's you can you can sort of pick a um, a background that's going to give you some things like as you develop like um if you if you pick the the warrior uh archetype or whatever right um you're gonna get more hit points you're gonna just be better at fighting in general um but you're typically n never going to be as skillful at you know hacking computers or being like diplomatic and talking and um being the face of the party like think uh think jane think jane in um uh firefly you know uh so you know jane is like he's really good in a fight he's a good shot um n not very charismatic not very charming um and then another basket that things are going to fall fall into is the um uh, the 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 expert, and this is going to be your your expert pilot, um, or your um, uh, uh, Romana backgrounds the uh, like a you know a courtesan or um, the um, or or the the mechanic you know the mechanic um, Kaylee, like think think those characters those characters are going to be your experts. And um, that's not to say that they're totally useless in a fight. It's just that they're better at, at doing other things like talking, for example, fixing the engine, um, et cetera, et cetera, right? And, um, and then you're going to have those people that are a mix. Um, uh, or, or also the other, another road that you could go down is the psychic road, right? Like river. Um, river is going to be like the the psychic um so yeah like the there's there's um there's more skills baked into it and um skills uh work different from D, D. so combat is going to be a d20 where you can still get that nat one and you can still get the you know the the natural 20 um and uh um, but as far as skills go, uh, skills are a much smoother bell curve, which feels a lot better um, when you've kind of sp spec'd out a character 
to do some things like you've 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 done some some point by um and it does use a point by system but where you if you've you know you have like a a character that's a certain level and you put a lot of points into maxing out some kind of skill whatever that is when you use um, a 2d6 system it's a much much smoother bell curve um so i'll get into that in a little bit but um uh the other option is the adventurer which is going to be like your well, i guess nobody's nobody had a, everything in like mal i would say or you know um where it's like they're part pirate they're part um you know d diplomatic and they just kind of have like a little basket of, of a little bit of everything and you can like pick up like maybe like one psychic skill or whatever where you can um you can teleport and that's it um and a lot of people do the um like partial expert partial psychic or you know partial warrior partial psychic um like you can make a a a melee melee psychic that is going to be tough as nails if you wanted to or you could make a um, a psychic who's very very squishy but really really good at talking and being diplomatic um so another thing that's different about stars right is that when you pick your um your backgrounds um let's say that you want to go the barbarian route if uh if you're m making a character and um you're like yeah you know like he's just he he's not charismatic he's like you know like a warrior from one of these backwards worlds where they um like they view psychic powers as like witchcraft or whatever like um yeah barbarian you know might might fit right um but you're you're in no way shape or form locked into the barbarian route um, what I mean is that is it's kind of like a, just a jumping off point where you get some um, uh, you get some some like initial skills like some initial stats um, and then from then on out it's just point by uh, you just you just pick where you want to to put your put your points when you level up right so if you want to be the courtesan you know if you want to be um, uh, Romana Baccarin, um, or you know the the criminal. If you want to be like uh, Mal or whatever, and, and pilots and like that's it's kind of like more of a jumping off point. And then you can have like character arcs where your character is doing different things like in the game, and then that's kind of like how they develop through their point by. And I would recommend that too if you're if you're running this game. Um, don't let your characters or don't, don't let your players go down routes with their characters where they have not been doing that with their characters where it's like oh well i want to be an expert hacker but it's like you haven't touched a computer in the whole game um i would say you know like let people fail forward where they're trying to do something and then they you know pick up the skill like from from doing it like getting better at it right um so yeah here's the here's the classes um expert psychic warrior adventurer and then there's going to be all of the um the the partial versions so um also like the expert warrior is going to be able to uh re-roll an attack or reroll uh, catching a, a brutal hit. And um, a lot of times they're the one that you can count on in the fight, you know, when the chips are down to come out on top and, and land that, that nice satisfying blow, right? And then the expert is the guy that is going to land the spaceship in the middle of the maelstrom and just, you know, just ease it right in there right because uh, they can do the same thing like they can re-roll a, a failed skill check or they just have other options when it comes to uh, 
like their their uh, profession of choice. Um, so uh, yeah, foci is, is another part of the game. Um, if you if if you've played D and D, you know again think feats. So foci is going to be um, it's uh, a lot of them will give you skills. Like um, let's see, if you take uh, alert, um, then you uh, you you can't be surprised, right? And then at the level, at the second level, um, you're always going to go first in uh, an initiative. And um, it's going to give you notice as a bonus skill. So if you had no, um, no notice um, skill, it would automatically put it at, at one from a negative one. Um, so... Yeah, actually, that's um, that's a good uh, that's a good thing to to touch on with the skills, right? So, um, with uh, with your skills, and I'm gonna I'm gonna throw up the um, the the bell curve here. Um, so, when you when you roll two d six, right? Um, it's it's a much much smoother, much smoother bell curve than a a d20 because a d20 you get a one and you can get a 20 you get everything in between it's just wildly swingy um unless you have like really really crazy high like modifiers and skills that whatever it is that you're doing it's just going to be all over the place right and so with a, a 2d6 system um it's a much much smoother bell curve because um, like there's only one combination out of two dice that equals a two. Uh, and then, you know, and one combination out of, out of two dice that equals a 12. And then there's going to be like six combinations in the middle that equal a seven. Uh, like a seven is the most common roll um, out of uh, like the, the combination or whatever it is, like 36 dice, right? A seven is going to be uh, it's going to come up like uh, a majority of the time out of out of every possible rule, right? So if you put the points into it, and then you you know you have like a a decent wisdom, and then you or your or let's say that you're trying to do like a stealth check, um, if you're a, a partial expert or whatever, and you took you you took the focus. Then you could get three d six, and then drop the lowest one, and then, um, and then you add your sneak skill plus your dex. So it's just like way, way smoother as far as like role play mechanics go. Um, and um, I'm convinced, <laughs> I'm I'm convinced that that Kevin, um, Kevin Crawford, the guy who who writes um, Stars Without Number and uh, Sine Nomine, Sine Nomine Publishing. Um, he's a prolific writer, and um, it's just Kevin. It's just Kevin Crawford, um, and he writes. Uh, he writes a lot of books. So, um, yeah, but uh, so that's how how skills are going to work. Skills are going to be a two d six combination, and then um, combat. Like if you're if you're shooting. Uh, like a, a rifle or something like that, then you're gonna add um, your your shoot skill, and then if you're a warrior, then you're gonna get a plus one to that, and then you're gonna add your uh, your dex to it, right? So um, it's 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 a great system. Trust me, it works really really well. Um, <clears throat> Uh, psionics so uh, psionics are are gonna take the place of jedi powers space magic um like what have you right um but psionics are so so simplified compared to you know like we're at, at like the end of the life cycle for 5e and there are so 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 many spells and like keeping track of that with your players and being like 
no, you know, that, that spell requires concentration and so does that spell and you just cast, you know, like this and um, you got hits, you know, so, so make a concentration save. It's like, it is just so, so simplified. <laughs> um, and that's one of the, one of the reasons why I actually love running stars is that um, it's a slightly less crunchy game um, as far as rules go. I wouldn't say it's rules light. It's very it's similar um, as far as rules go to something like Traveler or D and D, um, but it's um, streamlined, I guess. Uh, there's some things that I love. There's some uh, things that I love about the system, like um, if you're trying to help somebody do something, um, and then you uh you're completely untrained in it like uh say that the expert hacker is trying to um hack into the mainframe right and then you have no idea what you're doing but you're trying to help um what you do is you you add your um your negative one modifier to their to their roles <laughs> right or if you actually know what you're doing then then yeah you can help um and then um, the uh, the back pe the the backpack sheet right um, things like a like a, an assault rifle or um, like a, having like a knapsack are gonna have what what's called encumbrance um, and then let's say that uh, an assault rifle has one encumbrance um, your your total encumbrance is your strength so if you have a strength of ten then you can carry ten one encumbrance items so you know just nice streamlined and uh and and it, and it feels great right um it's like uh uh vehicle to vehicle combat uses um like a version of uh thaco and if you don't know what that is it's an old school term it just means a two hit armor class where um like the faster that you're going, if you're going in a vehicle, uh, then you're gonna take that speed off of, off of the the attack roll. Uh, so the faster you're going, the harder you are to hit with an attack, and you can you know outpace other starships or whatever else is chasing you. There's just there's a there's a lot of um, a lot of stuff in this game that's just like nice and clean and simple, and it works really well. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, let's talk about the, um, the, the psychic skills. Um, so metapsionics is going to be, um, uh, like psychic versus psychic stuff, like spotting other psychics, um, uh, uh, setting up like traps where like if somebody is using their psychic skills then you can uh, do damage to them um, think like you know scanners or something like that um, biosionics is going to be all sorts of like healing things that you can do using psionics um, and uh, precog is going to be seeing into the future um, like uh, saying say that um, somebody's about to get hit by a sniper and uh and then like you 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 see them get shot and then as a reaction you shove them out of the way before the um the bullet actually hits them right uh and uh telekinesis is going to be like um throwing up like a force field or um uh, picking up like a rock and then throwing it with the force of a bullet and uh, or like starting fires and things like that with your with your mind if you want to make a tough melee psychic um telekinesis is kind of the way to go um telepathy which is like reading other people's minds or um making them think that you're their best friend even though you just met them um things like that and one of my personal favorites uh teleportation which is just like it sounds um you know uh think uh like hayden christensen and uh jumper or like um uh nightcrawler and x-men um 
and you might you know if you've played traveler you might recognize some of these schools right they work really well trust me and then if you have a um a, a partial psychic partial warrior um then you're only going to have access to one of those schools um or you know a partial psychic partial expert like i i have um a character who's like a, a a teleporting cat burglar very very stealthy sneaky um kind of like ninja character right but all he the only school that he has access to because he's a partial psychic is teleportation and um but you there there's also going to be those those characters who are um full psychics who have access to every single school of uh, of psychic right um so uh the um the game works on um scenes it's very cinematic um so say that you're a warrior um once per um scene you can uh re-roll a failed hit or you can uh, force the dm to re-roll a failed hit on them um and uh same thing if you're an expert like if you uh, failed a you know a piloting check you can um, re-roll the the piloting check um, and then also like if you're a psychic there's going to be a lot of things that are going to recharge on a scene versus like once a day there might be some things that recharge like once a day like shoving somebody out of the way out of sniper fire when they you see them get hit you can only do that like once a day um but if you're you know teleporting around teleporting around and doing things like you can do that a certain amount of times like on a scene depending on what level your character is and then when you think of a scene just think of like um like on a tv show where um everybody's on the ship and then they're all like you know doing this doing this stuff on the ship and then and then it cuts over and then like they've landed and they're unloading the cargo and you know so when you're when you're playing your game like think of scenes like that and um you know that's that's kind of how that works right um so uh skill checks you know i've, I've, I've talked about this like the uh, uh a six rolling rolling a six on two dice not that hard <laughs> Um, you know, it does happen, like, especially if you're not skilled at it and you have a negative one modifier and, you know, you have like maybe a negative one, um, stat at something, it can be tough. But if you're, if you have a character and they've specced out to do that thing, most of the time they do it and it feels better. It feels good instead of being like, oh, I got a one. So, you know, um, uh, combat and, um uh like that's all gonna feel very very much like D, &D. um or you know like a, a, a other um d20 system like a pathfinder or uh you name it right so you're gonna have like your main action which could be like making a you know a melee attack a ranged attack um doing a a, a psychic thing uh, is going to be an action, um, like reloading and stuff like that. And, uh, and then, um, you're going to have your move action. And, um, so, you know, that's, that's all, that's all going to feel like pretty much the same. Right. Um, so, you know, like that is pretty much most of the rules right there and you can see that i'm like a quarter of the way through this uh through this you know rule book um there's going to be a lot of stuff in here about like vehicles uh spaceships drones um like there's you know okay well yeah we've got armor and uh like weapons and stuff like that um but uh 
I mentioned the, um, the, the sandbox element, right? Um, about, once you get to about halfway through the book, um, is when you start getting into all of these uh, tables. And um, this is a, uh, I know a lot of people who don't use these, um, but this is a huge chunk of the book. It's just the stuff that's designed to help you build out your sandbox. Um, so, and you know, to me, it's like there's a lot of things in this game that kind of play like mini games. Like with character creation, you can just roll the dice and and see what you get. Um, and like, you know, that that could that could mean like, okay, like I rolled a twenty, I'm I'm playing a barbarian, and then he has he got these stats and then um it's not quite as involved as like Traveler where you're you're rolling to see like what happened with their career, like until they muster out of the, you know, interstellar navy or whatever. Um but uh, a world creation is like its own mini game, um, and like I mean that I guess um, it's kind of like a mini game where if you picture like playing, um, oh what was that? What was that game? I'm trying to think of the one where you like uh, you you just have like a, a bunch of random words or whatever or random sentences, and then you need to like fill in some words to make a story it's kind of like a almost like a writing game where you you know you could roll your dice and then just see what you get with uh with like a, a world and um and then just kind of build a story from there right um and you know i feel like like stars just really really excels at um it being uh, a great sandbox and um one thing that um kevin says in in the book which i've kind of taken to heart is um don't ever force combat on your characters right um because combat in this game can be super super deadly like at level one you roll 1d6 and then that's your hit points plus your con and then if you get hit by an assault rifle or you know well-placed uh, laser blast you're dead um just like real real combat um you know and like it does get better like as as you go on you can soak up a little bit more damage and you know get a few more hit points into you and stuff like that but um combat is supposed to be super deadly it's it's kind of like a old school you know, in that where like, <laughs> just embrace uh, character death, because <laughs> it'll happen if you're forcing combat on your players. So what Kevin recommends doing is let your players, um, you know, use the environment. Like let them, uh, if they if they don't if they want to sneak around the guards, if they want to do something else, you know, if they don't want to like kick in doors and and go head charging headlong into combat if they want to be sneaky and they want to kind of stack the cards like in their favor um let them and uh and i i have totally embraced this um like i feel like if your players are expecting a fair fight um in this game and they're not sort of stacking the deck in their favor like taking it you know taking advantage of the situation and like exploring and, and figuring out how to use things to their advantage, then they're not doing it right. <laughs> um, but, uh, but yeah, so I, I love this game. Um, I hope you try it. And um, if you're looking for, you know, a good um, uh, sci-fi game, that is like not too crunchy, um, where the rules are not like a bowl of bricks. Um, and also, um, you know, I mentioned that, that Kevin is a prolific writer. So um, you, he has a lot of different uh, systems that he's written using these rules. And I feel like they work really, really well. 
he's um he's working on a cyberpunk game right now and um personally i'm looking forward to that because i feel like most of the cyberpunk games out there right now are kind of crap <laughs> um but uh you know he also has a um there's a uh um a fantasy version which is worlds without number which is going to play you know closer to like dungeons and dragons and um and also um there uh these are a lot of these are going to have free versions worlds without number is going to have a free version stars without number is going to have a free version um because he typically pays for his games with kickstarters um and also um kevin is just a great guy like uh when uh, i remember my first um not face-to-face -face interaction but like my first uh interaction with him was um i uh, i emailed him and i asked him hey you know like i'm a big fan of stars without number um i want to publish something on uh drive through rpg um what kind of what do I need to do? What kind of hoops do I need to jump through to publish something that's stars without number compatible? He got back to me within 15 minutes and then he said, this is what you do, you know, like um, it just outlined everything for me about how I would, about how I could do it and never have to pay him any royalties. And it would be in, and it would be, you know, copyright protected and, uh, and then I could just throw a Stars Without Number compatible on the cover because he's just, you know, he's just a great guy. And he totally understands the concept of, you know, a, um, a rising tide lifting all ships, unlike certain publishers out there. Um, and like you know, on, his, uh, on his Reddit uh, or on um, the, uh, the, the, stars without number or like worlds without number or um you know he has a uh like a a game where you like play on on earth after this um apocalypse and that you know it'd be kind of like more like mad max or um like a fallout or something like that there's a setting for that um there's uh he has source books if you want to run like a merchant campaign or uh darkness visible like a sons of gold is a great source book if you want to run a merchant campaign like a um a rogue trader campaign or um uh darkness visible is uh, going to be a great source book if you want to play in an espionage campaign um, and he also has, he has a, you know, a samurai game. Um, and he has, um, a, uh, uh, what's it called? Where's the, there's like a, there's a, a Call of Cthulhu kind of type game. Um, so, you know, D&D &D, like used to be like this. Um, there, there, it used to be that you could learn a, a, a system and and there are publishers out there like green ronin is kind of doing this now and um like uh um well i guess there's there's lots of publishers that are they have like an srd that they're actually standing behind and they're or like a, an open gaming license where people can publish content that's um compatible with their game or they can build another game that uses the same system and they're not going to come after them this is a great system and you can just you could learn this system and then you could uh rope your friends into like okay well now we're gonna play a samurai game or um now uh i want to play a um a like a, a, a an elder tour like kind of investigation um thing like where there's uh like a monster of the week type thing right so um you know i love this game and uh kevin is a great guy sent i nominate great publisher and i just wanted to share i wanted to uh shine a little bit of light on this on this publisher like i've mentioned how 
I hope that some of the backlash of this whole thing is that the silver lining of the cloud is that uh, smaller indie publishers like this with great games get a little bit more sunshine on their games. So anyways, yeah, that's going to be it, you guys. So take care of yourselves, and I will see you in the next one. And uh, yeah, have a good one.